Hello and welcome back to part two of our very special season so far analysis with Lynn, with Ben, with Holly Shand and of course myself. Just before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button though because we've got so much good content coming out over the next few weeks and also through the season as well. But in this international break, we'll be keeping you company because I know you'll be missing the Premier League. But for now, head over to the first video if you haven't seen it. Part one is where we analyse all the good assets, but we're going to go into the bad teams and maybe those to avoid from game week eight and onwards. But just before that, we've got another film to guess the title of. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, it will bring a question as well in terms of maybe should we put them in the good? Should we put them in the bad? Lynn's very keen. Lynn's just kind of brought so Holly as well. Um, let's have a look at <laughs> it's good. That's a good Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit something. Yeah. Yeah. But and the, who yeah. Is the player. That's the bit I'm struggling with. Lord of the Ings. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even look like Danny Ings. No, that is a very unsexy pick of him. Oh. I'm like, I'm trying to like cover up the hair and the beard, and I'm still like, mm. yeah. Well, I'm trusting that it is Danny Ings. It is Danny Ings. We used, we did a mix of Photoshop and Reface app for this. So that one was a Reface one. So I guess right. next time we do this, Ben, we know that it's uh, Photoshop all the way. But in terms <laughs> of Lord of the uh, Lord of Rings, is it Return of the Ings? I don't know. But let, let's let's continue the discussion with the bad teams so far this season. I want to start off with maybe a controversial one. Lynn, I'm, I'm going to give it to you because you enjoyed it so much last week when we talked about it. Manchester United, are they bad? Oh, so bad. <laughs> Liverpool instead. Uh, <laughs> no, um, they have not looked really good, have they? I just don't feel like they're they're not merging. That is, I don't know what's going on. I, I can't decide. Is it Ole that's not? managing his team properly is he messing things up and uh, adding and removing and yeah i don't know what it is but at the moment ronaldo is ronaldo still but other than that there's not really anyone i would like in my team yeah i think this weekend almost made me a little bit worried to carry on owning Ronaldo though because at his price point he, he's so brilliant and that's the thing but the United team seem to be letting down just a little bit they've they've got a lot of talent in that team but Ole seems to be mismanaging it I mean Ben what is your opinions on the situation there it, it looks like they're they're playing quite narrow up top um they they seem to be passing it about quite a bit, but not able to, to kind of make those key passes, those cutting ones through. And at times they just look very confused and they keep conceding as well. To me, it looks like one of those FIFA Ultimate teams where you just pick a handful of superstars <laughs> in and just plonk them on a team. And it's just a lot of individuals. And then, yeah, you're not, you, they're not gelling. Um, they're not coming together. Big call by Oli at the weekend, dropping both Pogba and Ronaldo. Uh, I don't for a second believe that the consultation didn't go on with Cristiano. I'm sure he's wearing the trousers in that relationship. Um, and, you know, it, it. I think he probably understood that, you know, he, we know he's a physical specimen. We know he's, he's as sharp as a tack and he looks after himself. But let's not forget, he still is. 36 years of age, um, big game during the week, Champions League, Villarreal, of course, it was a bit of a, an emotional roller coaster, um, and that was a late victory. But look, still a massive, massive call from Solskjaer. The return of Marcus Rashford as well will only go on to, to further muddy the waters, potentially could be back in and around the squad from game week eight. I just don't see how, how that front four if it is, or, or whether he goes to a 4-3-3. I, I really don't know how he's going to set that up, other than you've got to start Ronaldo, and then it's anybody from Greenwood. I think he's got to start Bruno. 
Um, but then you go Sancho. I mean, I think maybe Jess Lingard's a little bit unfortunate as well, considering how poorly United have been. Um, I think Lingard could, he, he's got a case to be in that starting 11 as well. Holly, what are your opinions on the Man United situation? Uh, defensively, Luke Shaw, a lot of people at the start of the season said, oh, he's underpriced. He's a great asset. He's not kind of proved himself so far. Ronaldo, he had a good explosive start, as did the whole of the Man United team, but it's kind of regressed, regressed, regressed since then. Yeah, it's a really tricky one. I mean, they're not playing amazingly, are they? And they're just not creating a lot of chances at the moment. I mean, I've got Luke Shaw in my team, and I think... He's kind of popping up in the right sort of places and he's still dominating the set pieces. So I think he will get chances. And obviously when the focal point is Ronaldo in that team, then he is going to do okay. The problem is, is Ronaldo going to be the focal point always? We don't know. Um, I mean, I was obsessed with Bruno Fernandes and then I dropped him like a stone when Ronaldo came because, you know, Ronaldo is just Ronaldo, isn't he? But the trouble is penalties if Bruno still on penalties he could be really good value like he's the amount of chances he's creating um is really impressive still so I mean I think we just need to see how it plays out over the next few weeks but it's not a great time to be heavily invested in Manchester United when there's so much uncertainty so we're going to move on to the next team we've got another quiz uh, another uh, one for you, another film. This one. Who is it? Eh, who is it? El- um, oh. Um... Hey, this is so easy. <laughs> you should know this one, Lynn. Come on. Magic Schmite. Yeah. <laughs> it just took me a while. I was like... <laughs> I got so distracted by the nakedness. Uh, my <laughs> mind just went some other way. <laughs> um, so yeah, Magic Schmike. In terms of Leicester, in terms of that 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 whole team, there's problems there. They're a bad team this season. Going into the season, Harvey Barnes, we were touting him to have a great one. They were looking good because they just won the FA Cup. This was their season to break into the top four and maybe push a little bit further than they did last season. But a lot of their underlying data is dreadful. The only one who seems to be doing good is the man himself that is a bit like Ronaldo. He he just transcends age. It's Jamie Vardy. Um, with their situation, though, Holly, what do you think is going to happen with Leicester? It's... It's one that it's, it's really difficult to call with them because they've got the you know ability to be a really good side. I think it's positive that we saw Ian Acho getting some minutes, and I feel like Harvey Barnes may finally be getting up to speed, which is going to help. Um, Jamie Vardy's just massively overlooked though, and you know we've seen what he's capable of. Um, he's obviously having a better season this season than last season. Remember the season before that when he didn't have any injury issues, he won the golden boot. So we probably ought to be considering him. It's just Lukaku and Ronaldo take so many headlines that like he gets pushed so much further down the pecking order. I mean, with with Ronaldo then, we've said that Man United have their problems. Leicester or, or Vardy himself is coming a little bit more into form. Is that maybe the, the logical transfer then to get Jamie in? He he does have flashes of brilliance. He's he's very streaky, goes in and out. But is this the time now, Holly, to, to actually bring him in? Probably. However, I'm not about to sell Ronaldo for Vardy. <laughs> it's like you sell it, you sell him a Ferrari to get what are we getting? You know, don't want to sell anyone with what yeah. <laughs> Selling the Ferrari for Vardy. Yeah, it's got a nice ring to it. <laughs> Ben, do you think, though, I think Holly's kind of hit something on the head there, really, that maybe wasn't talked about enough last season. Was Vardy still put out good performances? But he was carrying a, a pretty bad injury for a long while there, wasn't he? Yeah, ongoing, I think, it was calf problems, uh, which did hamper his performance. And also just altered his performances and, and turned more of a creator as opposed to a, a goal scorer. Um, we know what Vardy's about. You know, it's those explosive runs 
off the shoulder of the last man. Um, he's never going to be too far away. Uh, he, he's loved by Brendan Rodgers. What I do like as well, he hasn't been starting in the Europa League. That would be my concern with regards to, you know, a game like the Michael Antonio playing those games in quick succession. I'm not quite sure he'll have it in his legs. And, you know, will we be getting those optimal performances on a Sunday? Probably not if he does, if Leicester go deep into that competition. But the way they're playing at the moment, uh, it doesn't really look like they will be progressing because they've been pretty poor. I think the miss uh, of the absence of Johnny Evans has been huge. Defensively, they look all at sea. Um, Vestergaard, I mean, well, he, he, he's tall. We'll just put it that way. Sancho is looked the shadow of the player that he that he once was. Um, uh, Brendan Rodgers is, is, is tinkering with his formation as well, so I think he's clutching his straws on, on how to actually set up his team. We've seen him in a 4-2-3-1, a 3-1-4-2. Castanhas had a delayed start of the season. Pereira hasn't been great. Um, then we had Perez has been in and out, had the injury, had the suspension. We mentioned Harvey Barnes. Albrighton's been coming in. sumare has been coming in. Uh, it looks like Ndidi's going to be out now for around about four to five weeks. So again, that just changes things up. Does that mean Tielemans drops a little bit deeper? So Madison... Madison is just so off the boil. It's it's ridiculous. And I've been a, a one that's been championing his cause. A lot of the time I expected a big season from him and we've had absolutely nothing and deservedly we've seen him drop to the bench in recent games. So I'm just not confident with Leicester at the moment. It's uh, on the watch list. Lynn, do you want to give the final words on Leicester? Does Vardy interest you at all? He is consistent, but for that amount of money, you can get something more exciting with a higher ceiling. So it's a no for me. Interesting. Let's move it to Tottenham then. Uh, Lynn, do you want to start us off on the Lily Whites, the boys who are my biggest rivals? Um, I mean, I gave you the opportunity to rip into Manchester United. Now you can do my work and rip into Tottenham for me. But I kind of like Tottenham. That's the problem. And, I, well, more than anything, I like Sun. Sun is a great player, and he is performing. So if you're getting one Tottenham player, it should be Sun. Ben? Um, yeah. You, you were disagreeing until the words Sun were said. I, I was disagreeing just, just te- Tottenham in general. I think they've been atrocious. I think Nuno is horrific. We've seen a carryover from his absolute just abomination of a season with Wolves last year. This passive, more conservative style of play. Um, we've seen Harry Kane. You know what? Harry Kane playing on the left wing. He needs to be sacked for that. For, without any, you know, further ado, uh, the one of the world's best strikers. Um, you know, isolated out there. His heat maps. I think did he have one shot on target in two games? 180 minutes. Ridiculous. Um, I'm not so look, Hi Min Sun, great, absolutely love him. Uh, and he is the only player that I would consider at the moment, even though I did captain Harry Kane two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll, I, I we'll talk I've about sold that. him now. I've sold him. Ah, very, very good. I mean, Holly, with with Sun, with Tottenham, looking at their attacking data. They're bottom three for XG. Um, and in terms of their defensive data as well, it's really bad reading for them as well. Bottom four for XG conceded. Sun is great. He he regularly overperforms. I think in Europe's top five leagues, he is the biggest overperformer last six seasons, I think since 2015 for XG. So it doesn't really matter to him. He's he's such a fine shooter of the ball that he he can do that. But at his price point in such a poor team, is that really where you want to spend your money? Do you not want to spend it on an upcoming team or somebody with good underlying data? Yeah, we've not seen enough from Spurs as a squad, have we, to think we want to be spending £10 million on a midfielder from them. And Son's always the sort of player that sits in a funny place because he's not quite got that premium price tag, but he's not 
a mid-price player either. So he always gets shoved down the pecking order and he's never that easy to get into our squad. So I think you're best off looking elsewhere. They've got a few Spurs fans in the family. They're all cocky after game week three are the top of the league, nine points. Were there any side not to... Um, the only side to win the first three games and I was like oh well you know the data says otherwise and that's come to fruition yeah I mean it's been nice in my area kind of going around seeing the Tottenham fans stop talking to me after the Arsenal game uh they you know regularly kind of chipping in saying oh Tottenham are doing so good at the moment and then after that resounding result that I never heard from them again I don't know why um Ben I'm going to give this to you. This is a great opportunity. Leeds, lay into them. You went on one rant against them. Do you want to do another? Well, I went on a rant and then they go in and put a performance out. That actually, they have 20 shots on goal. Um, nice win on the board. But look, I had a little bit of a dig at Bielsa last week um, and I'll continue to do so because Leeds should be higher up the table than, than where they are now. There doesn't seem to be any kind of plan B it's plan A. We'll continue with plan A. And if plan A isn't working, then we'll stick with plan A. We will bomb forward. We will, you know, this high energy, this great look. Players are, uh, opposition are understanding a little bit more how leads are playing and they're finding ways to, to counteract, you know, this high intensity style of play. Um, and I think that's to the detriment of, of leads. Um, we all expected Leeds to kick on this season after a great first campaign coming up from the second tier. Um, that hasn't happened. And of course, they've picked up injuries to key players. Um, Patrick Bamford is, is, is big. And Luke Aylin, now who we understand, uh, looks like he's going to need surgery on that knee. And even if it is a minor surgical procedure, we still could easily be talking four to six weeks, depending on, on, on the precise nature of that. You cannot rely on Diego um, Laurentiis to stay fit because that just doesn't happen since he's arrived in English football. Um, you know, you can resort to the likes of Charlie Cresswell, great, excellent under-23 development player, undoubtedly with a big future. But these are not the players that you want to be relying on week in and week out when things aren't going great. Um, look, if I was a lead supporter, I would want to look at that performance in game week seven and hope that that was our season starting from that point. But for me, again, I, there's just too many red flags with regards to leads at, at this moment. Um, I, I, Rafina would has been one of the standout performers, even with this injury that he's been carrying, this niggling little problem and reduced minutes, he's still returning. Is there anybody else in that team at the minute that I would be confident in owning? Uh, probably not. Well, in fact, not not probably, no. There you go, Rafina, and that's it. <laughs> Ollie, game week eight and beyond, Leeds sit second for the easiest fixture run, just behind Chelsea. I mean, is it is it time to still keep faith in them? Because Rafina, like Ben said, he's absolutely brilliant. Bamford will probably be back to, to fitness post-international break. Will he be back to full kind of match sharpness, though, is another question. But this is a team that can produce really fantastic data. Uh, they're, I think, the most aggressive team in terms of PPDA and things like that this season. So there is a, a lot of quality behind them. They just haven't met it so far. Is, is this a situation where we saw how good they were last season and they will get there? Or is this second season syndrome coming in? No, I think we'll still see those good performances from Leeds. And the, the thing that I like about the, owning their fantasy assets is that they play and attack the full 90 minutes, whether they're 3-0 down or whether they're up in the game. So it's always exciting to own a Leeds player. But I wouldn't be jumping on Bamford until I've seen... That, you know that he is back to full fitness and back in the goals I think you need to be focusing on Rafina and you know the defense has just been atrocious the, I think their injury issues it's going to take a while to get over them so focus on Rafina in the attack and wait and see on Bamford Bamford's like a swear word to you Ben isn't it garbage <laughs> uh, Lynn what's your opinions on the lead situation I mean you've you've not been 
we've said this so many times, but just to make it clear, you think Rafinha is a good player, but he's not for you in FPL. Is that your continued kind of, you know, uh, philosophy, basically? Yes, if there was one time you actually own Rafinha, this would be it. But I think he's a bit like Wardy. He's good and he's consistent. But he doesn't get you those big holes. And that's what I like. I like the, the players who can get 20 points in one game, or at least double digits. Um, that's what I'm looking for. So I would rather invest in someone like Decore, who can enable me to get Holden or Greylish or someone like that. Yeah, so I think that's where I am at. Final bad team of the season so far. It's Wolves. Uh, they've they've had great underlying data. They've you know defensively and offensively they've shot lots, but they've just not had the balls going into the back of the net. They've not kept clean sheets. Lynn, they were a team that you started, you, you know, with Traore. You were big on him. Then you brought in Jimenez as well. Um, although you got rid of Traore, you didn't have both at the same time. Are you keeping the faith with Jimenez now? I am, but I'm also keeping an eye on Van. He looks good. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, uh, so he... would you double up possibly then? No, no, no double up. I would either go Wang instead of Jimenez just to re release some fun. Um, but yeah, he was looking very good in Bundesliga for one season uh, and he played so well against Liverpool. Like that, he's a quality player. Christmas. Has he got the people around him to support that? I think he might do with Jimenez, actually. But I think he, he could be a really interesting prospect going forward. Holly, at his price, does Wang kind of, you know, persuade you at all? Jimenez, I think the whole of the, the Wolves team, in fact, have been really good at creating chances this season. They just haven't been able to put them away. Is he the guy to do this? Yeah, potentially. I think... I think Jimenez is always going to have the advantage, though, because he's probably on penalties. And I feel like you look at the underlying data for Jimenez, and the thing that looks really good is that not only is he having the shots, um, he's also creating the chances as well. So you've got that, you know, double-pronged source of fantasy points. And, you know, it was great to see him get his goal against Southampton and, and you know, taking it in such fabulous fashion because obviously he's been out for so long um, that, you know, it's nice to see that he's back in the goals and his confidence is building. So he's one of those players that can go on a bit of a hot streak as well. We've seen it in previous seasons and, you know, Wolves have still got excellent fixtures for the foreseeable. And even when the fixtures turn, you know that he likes scoring against the big six as well. Ben, do, the, do you give any time of day for Wolves assets? <laughs> uh, look, I, at the beginning of the season, I, I, I really liked Jimenez. Um, he was a player who had been getting rave reviews from the training pitches. But of course, that transitioning from non-competitive environment to the cut and thrust of the Premier League is, is a lot different. And it's maybe took him a little bit time. But the underlying data is there. And so I do see a uh, high potential um, for to for Jimenez to, to recapture some of that form that we all know is capable of, of delivering. And in the bull, he chanted 5.5. I mean, anybody can score against Newcastle, of course, the way we <laughs> are at the moment. But um, there's a lot to like there. I, I, I called my hands up and say I've never really seen a lot of his involvement from the Bundesliga, but the glimpses that I've caught in the Premier League, um, you know, then potentially, you know, we spoke with uh, Tim Spires, I think Spears, yeah. from the Athletic at the top oh, of the start of the season, um, and they talked about how Bruno would bring in this new attacking philosophy, and maybe we're a little bit hasty in, in thinking that those new philosophies could be implemented quickly um, and maybe it'll just take a little bit longer for the players to to understand this new style of playing and maybe you know, these last couple of game weeks where we've seen a slight upturn certainly in performances and results maybe this is their season beginning to kick start the only problem with me with regards to maybe he chant would be look Jimenez starts and it's it's almost four or five um, it's for, to fill those other two players, you've got Trincao, uh, you've got Adama Traore, 
you've got Daniel Pudence. Um, even in behind, you know, you've had Dendonga in for Neves. Um, does Matinho start? So that would be my only worry. But if he keeps on delivering and, and he chan keeps on scoring the goals, and he then he deserves that place on merit. And at five point five, well, you know, there's there's a lot of like there. So we move into the, the last little little bit here, but we've got one more quiz question. We'll have to hurry because I think Holly's fallen asleep. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Holly. I think uh, the, the baby's teeth have grown by now. I don't have the teeth. <laughs> She's got fangs. <laughs> so, the last film question. Anybody got a clue on this one? Holly, Lynn? It, you've told me the answers and I still don't even know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> what on um, yes. You're showing a lot of pictures of half-naked men here. Yeah, is, well, that, that's for me. Is the film Blood Diamond? <laughs> no, oh, it's Holly. not. Oh, Holly, I, I want to give you the money myself there. Do you know, it looks like Bridge Over River. It, it is a war film. Um, uh, I mean, if if nobody's got a clue, uh, I think... At least tell us the film. It's, well, the, the film is... It's got to be... Apocalypse Now. Oh, wait, oh. And is that supposed to be... Is that supposed to be Daniel Fogger? Can it be? Yes, it is. What on earth? Well, that is ridiculous. It's I, supposed to be. You're getting, you're getting sacked in the morning, both you <laughs> and Fogger. So the film title is supposed to be Apocalypse Now Rich. Oh, that is absolutely disgusting. That's awful. Yeah, yeah, is... oh, get off, get off. Get I can't off. believe you kept me up till 20 past <laughs> nine for that. <laughs> that I, Holly, I, I apologise. Uh, that's me. such like a dad joke. I that thought is... you'd appreciate that, Ben. No, no, no. I, it's disgusting. Even Ben's got standards. <laughs> I mean, they're very low. <laughs> well, that is the last discussion point then in terms of game weeks one to seven. I think we've given you the best and the worst. Please do get involved in the comments if you agree or disagree with what we have discussed today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out Holly on Twitter. Uh, do you have YouTube as well, Holly? Yes, I do. So give the channel a plug, tell where people to go. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I do That's, know what the channel uh, is, but cool. um, we're going through a little bit of a rebrand at the moment. So that, that's why I'm a little bit hasty. But at the moment, you can find it at Fantasy Football Community. Or just go to your Twitter, Holly Shand, you know, uh, yeah. you can find that as well. Yeah. Everybody check out Lynn as well, FPL Lynn. I mean, all your stuff, your YouTube content is with us, though. So uh, with that, just check out more of the Premier Injuries channel. For now, I'm going to wish everybody the best of luck. I hope you enjoy your international breaks. I hope this helps you if you've got a wild card or any transfers that you need to do. But for now, the best of luck and a goodbye from everybody here. <laughs>